Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, thank you for coming. Um, my name is Tom Trimmer. We've had about four or five minutes before our official start. So I thought maybe um, you could give me some input uh, as to what you would like to hear today so I can focus on, on some of the areas of, of your uh, biggest questions. So, anybody have uh, any input? Yeah. Kilowatts. Kilowatts? Yeah. Size of system. What's the size of the solar panel? Well, the size of the system, the kilowatt. Okay. So what size of the system do you need? Right. Okay. That's that's the fundamental thing of what we're talking about. Yes. But like charge controllers. Charge controllers? Okay. Yes. Optimizing the amount of power you get when you're at northern latitude. Optimizing the amount of power you get at northern latitude. Okay. How to how to uh, Get max power, helium stacks, down the one side of the boat. carpet clouds. Thank you, Mother's Collection, for our catch rig. Okay, catch rig and, uh, and shading. Shading. Said we all have shading. Oh, yes. Rigid versus flexible panels, kind of pros and cons. Pardon me? Rigid versus flexible panels. Oh, rigid versus so flexible panels. Okay. We'll address that. Yes. Um, adding new new panels to really old ones. So we've got some stuff from the early 90s. Okay. And sticking more on there. Adding new to old. Okay, expanding the system. Yeah. Okay.
We must be all in the right place. We're here for solar. So, uh, I'm a cruising sailor uh, on the Great Lakes. We're, we're located in Michigan. So we use our solar all the time. Uh, that's how we got involved with the business. And I, I, my quest for power started when I put refrigeration on the boat. And I didn't have enough battery capacity, enough alternator capacity. There's always starting the engine to be up. And so there's got to be a solution to be involved into, into our company, specializing in solar. So today, this afternoon, we'll uh, address these issues. And I think they're the issues that a lot of you brought up. You talk, is this right angle? Did you all see this recently? Uh, we talk about solar panels, what they are, different kinds, different types, pluses and minuses. We're going to talk about solar controllers, which is part of your system. We're going to talk about the balance of the solar system. What are the components? Solar, controller, batteries, how we balance the whole system, how much of which do I need? So we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to do a, a case study. We're going to design a solar system. And I've got some handouts. And I know we're after doing, I'm probably going to lose a few of you going through the numbers, but uh, we'll do what we can, and we'll talk about different equipment options and uh, installation. Okay. Does that, does that cover pretty much what we're looking for? So, uh, when we're in a section, if, if I don't cover it in enough detail, let me know. So here's our components. Our solar panels, our controller, our batteries, and our appliances that are, that are drawing all so that's our that's our system. Okay. I probably I may be blocking you guys a little bit. I'll try to
makes sense that we want the higher, highest efficiency we can get. But we pay a price for that. The higher the efficiency, the more expensive it is. Okay. Um, the polycrystalline, uh, in, in, a, in a cloudy environment, will, will typically not degrade as fast in performance. However, with a monocrystal, you're starting from a higher performance. So if it degrades some, the model degrades some, it, it, it's kind of a, it, it, there's a point at which there's, there's a, somewhat of a trade-off. But, but by and large, we, we tend to, I, I think we sell 95% mono to 5% poly. Okay. So that's mono and poly. Um, now, when, the, when these cells are, are made, okay, they're put under an artificial light and they're measured how much output they, they put they produce. And it, it's kind of a bell curve where a lot of the panels are in the middle of the bell curve and on the amount of power they produce. But what we want are, are these over here that are the highest output. There's, there's not as many of them, so they're a little higher price. That's what we want. Residential and solar farms can be in here. You know, we're, we're the high volume there. Most of these are, are scrap or put in very low low cost uh, panels. Um, okay, so that, so that's A grade, B grade, C grade, and we we go for kind of an A plus grade. Yes. What's the approximate difference in energy yield between the A, B, and C? I, I, I'm going to show you that in just a minute. Actually, I think that's the uh, that's a brilliant question. I, I, I've got an answer for it. That's just uh, what what I wait for this. <laughs> you can use okay. it. So, so, and this gets back to your question too on value of, of the solar cell. Um, I can take two, uh, so it's all about watt hours. Watt hours, okay? So if we, I've got a solar panel here, okay, or here, all right? Now, my sun is coming up over here, so my sun angle from here is not that great, right? Up here, I've got maximum production of power. Over here, it, it falls off. <clears throat> the, the better the cell, the higher quality the cell, the more it's going to produce at these less than optimal sun angles. All right. So I can take two hundred watt panels, and, and a panel is rated, say, at, at hundred watts, that it will produce hundred watts under a standard artificial light. So I can have one with high quality cells, one with lower quality cells. When I put it out in the sun, the higher quality cell is going to start producing at a less sun angle, okay, and, and produce more. So it comes to how many watt hours or amp hours am I getting from the cell? And, and so the, the higher quality of the cell, the more, it, it can literally be 30% difference. And going to your, your, your question, so between a, a low quality and a high quality, get 30 percent. Now what's that mean? On a 100 watt panel, if I've got five hours average of sun, if, if, if this is the, the sun angle that gives me about five hours, okay, I'll get five, maybe 500 watts. Under a, a higher quality output cell, if I get 30 percent more, I'll produce 650 watt hours. So and that, you know, that comes to, to 12 and a half amp hours, which is a fair amount power uh, that, that I'm going to get out of the higher quality cell. Is that, is that the lower performance versus higher performance in this case? Is that the difference between C and A or A and A plus? It could be A and A plus, literally. Or it's this. Well, probably B and A plus, I guess, where I would go. Versus flexible. Now, now there's multiple kinds of flexible. That we talked about. With, let's talk about these for a minute. The rigid panels will give you a, a, a life of a, a good marine panel, 15 years, uh, sometimes 20. People told me they've had them for most of 20 years uh, before they, they really start to degrade. Uh, and they're really good for pole mounting or frame mounting or whatever. Uh, then you have the flexible panels. About seven to nine years, they're, they're continually evolving and improving, and uh, so I know some people are looking at 11-year 
life of, 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 their, of their flexibles. So those are great for bimini mounting, cabin top mounting. Uh, now the output per square inch of a, of a good flexible and a good rigid is the same. We use the same, and on ours, so we use the same cells in the flexible that we do in rigid. Okay. So I brought along a uh, flexible that I'm going to pass around so you can see what a flexible looks like and feels like. We have two different uh, mounting options. One is a bolt-on system where you put a hole in the, in the canvas and you bolt it on very secure. And another is with uh, high-strength magnets. So you can kind of see what these, these magnets, one of our uh, customers came up with this idea and said, Tom, you got to try this. And so we've experimented with different things. We've got a couple of different kinds here. And it really does work. And, and so I don't have to put a hole in the back of my canvas. I put a magnet on top of the panel. I come in the back and I put a magnet on. It's stuck. You can't get it off. So I'll pass this around. Uh, typically the panel comes with a three-foot pigtail. And these are MC4 solar plugs. And, and, and you, you want to get these because they're, they're waterproof. Uh, they're UV resistant, and then it makes the whole top of your, your solar system plug and plug. So you can plug, unplug panels, and all they're really great. So I'll pass this around just to uh, divert everybody's attention. Yeah. Um, I checked out the Sun Power booth yesterday, yes. and they were recommending Velcro to put it on top of your Dodger or Bimini. What is your opinion on what, that? What's my opinion on Velcro? Yeah. Um, so I guess you put the Velcro on, you attach the Velcro one. Velcro onto the actual, you know, the edge of your panel, and then you develop other Velcro on your bimini. Yeah, um, I, I, I'll give you my opinion of Velcro. Uh, I, I never recommend it. Uh, here's why. Uh, one, how do you attach it to the panel? If you use a sticky back Velcro, these panels get really right. warm, the glue yeah. melts. Yeah. Number no, one. They said you'd stitch it on. Yeah, and, and the second option is to stitch it on. Now, as soon as I stitch it on, what am I doing? I'm punching holes through the laminates of the panel. That, that eliminates the warranty, number one, and it increases the point of failure because now I've got water working on those laminates. So we do not recommend stitching. Okay. Okay. The third reason I don't recommend it is, uh, I don't know if you've ever experienced Velcro uh, in the sun, Velcro, Velcro degrades it's very, very quickly if it's, not, if it's exposed to UV, uh, even in Michigan where, where we are. Uh, we get a year out of Velcro. I know the one of the uh, slides that uh, popped up uh, prior to your presentation indicated that the uh, semi-flexibles have been attached to a dodger with uh, zippers. Is it possible to do that without degrading the panel? Uh, no, no. Uh, some some people do that. Yeah, there, there is an example of zippers. Uh, again, with a zipper, you, you got to stitch it on. Also, the zipper material is not UV protected. Uh, material and it turns from black to white within a day, I mean a year, and then it, then it falls apart. So we don't recommend that. Although we have pictures. Okay. Question. Question. You mentioned the MC4 connectors. One of the vendors on the floor is claiming they have connectors that send your duties MC4. Also, is there a percentage in filling these connectors? Okay, but the question is, is there something better than an MC4 connector? Um, <coughs> these are, are, are really standard. Our, our customers use them all the time and, and very few failure points. You'll notice there's a sealant, uh, an O-ring sealant. You can't put additional sealant on it. When you, when you tighten it onto the uh, wire, it, it, it seals it around there. And they're very, they're very good. Um, and they come, like, like if I had two panels I wanted to wire in, in parallel or series, <coughs> the one connector like this. And you just plug, plug the, the uh, negative of two panels here, and you got one wire going down to the down below. So they're great. Um, okay, marine versus uh, uh, so, uh, commercial. Typically, a marine panel is, is always filled with inert silicone. The, the number one point of failure of solar panels in a 
marine environment is often moisture getting into the electronics in the junction box, which are our dials. And when those fail, the panels are pretty well shot. So, so we, we fill our, our panels with a inert, inert silicone so that no moisture can, can get to the, to the items. And um, the, the rigid panels typically have better sealants on them. Uh, the marine panels have a, a, a surface coating on them. I think you had a question about uh, flexibles, different polyols. <coughs> different plastics used in flexible panels and um, depending on the quality, a, a, a lower quality flexible panel will turn milky and brown in about two years in the sun typically and uh, where a high quality will stay clear. And it, it depends on the materials that are used in the panel. So, so between the, the, the quality of the solar cells and the quality of the materials used in the panel. There's a wide range of quality of electric panels on the market. Um, uh, marine panels are often lower in voltage also. Because what, what we want to do is go from the solar panel voltage down to 14 volts to charge our 12 volt system. Is it, anybody here tw uh, 24 volt? Okay, so we uh, so on a 24 volt we might wire in series to get our voltage up to down to 24. Uh, so you can have some 32. So you can have some 32. Okay. Um, that's a <laughs> 32 is. Can I can tell you some stories. 32 volt bolts. I'm not sure. They're older bolts, yeah, yeah, but they're great. Um, so and the panels are wired to accommodate shading. So the, the whole idea is in, 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 in marine, we've got shading. And like it or not, we're stuck with shading. So we want a panel that, if it's shaded, it won't just totally degrade. Uh, so like a, a string of Christmas tree lights, one goes out, they all go out, okay? If a solar panel is wired in series, all the cells are wired in series, you've got a cell that is, is uh, shaded, then the whole series can degrade. If the panel's wired properly, uh, li literally that cell is bypassed, and the, and the performance of the panel stays high. So how the panel is wired for shading in a, in a marine environment is very important. Is it fair to say that uh, commercial solar panels are not wired uh, appropriately to minimize shading impact? Um, or is I think that's, that, that's fair to say. Is it fair to say that, that commercial panels are not wired for shading? Um, I think, it, I, I don't know, uh, on a broad statement, how they're made. I think typically they don't worry about it, but I, I, I really can't say it. Yeah. Um, I've heard an opinion that if you wire your panels in series, where they're all going to be facing the same way, so all of them might be shaded or not the same way, the result is a higher voltage coming out, and you can then use a charge controller that's made to accept higher voltage in and get more efficiency. And actually start charging for installation. Uh, I'm going to address that in general. Uh, so we're talking about series versus parallel wiring of channels. Uh, in fact, the slide after this one is that. And we'll, I'll address that. At, at that. Okay, a commercial panel, those are typically up around 30 plus volts. Some of them are 40 volts. So now I've got to bring down that 40 volts down to uh, 14 for my 12 volt charging. So I, I, my control has to do a lot more work. So, um, and they're, they're often, uh, the junction box is not filled. Here's the junction box that's not filled with panel failure. Okay. That was a bad day for that solar panel. Bad year because it totally degraded. So that's why you, you fill the junction boxes and you Now, to, to your question on series and parallel, here's, here's how, I put this in because invariably series and parallel comes in. Here's panels wired in series. So I go from the, they're like a, a string, like a, like a Christmas light string. So power goes in one panel, or output panel back in the other, and on down. So if these 
these are two 100 watt panels, <coughs> okay, uh, two 18 volt panels. I'll have 36 volts across here and 5.6 amps. If I wire them in parallel, where the two positives come together, and we use a, a plug like this to bring the two positives together, and another plug to bring the two negatives together, uh, like this, and I, I can pass this around. My voltage is 18 volts, but my amps are added. So in series, the voltage is an additive in parallel in series. Now, per your point, a lot of people recommend, oh, let's go, let's go series. The problem with going series is if this panel is shaded, okay, now what happens in my string? Okay, I brought down the, the whole system because my power is not going through this panel. In parallel, if this panel is shaded, this one's still going full performance. Okay. So we recommend, in most cases, parallel, uh, wiring your panels in parallel. With a, a panel with diodes in it so that, so that this panel, if, if it's shaded, it doesn't affect this panel. So, uh, and we could spend a lot of time on series versus parallel, but by and large, uh, we recommend parallel. If we've got a 24 volt, wire some in series to get my voltage up because I'm, I'm dealing with a higher charge voltage. But for a 12 volt system, we, we recommend a parallel wire. Yes. So is there any voltage drop in the locking diodes? Very, very low. Very minor. Very minor. Okay. Um, let's talk about controllers. Okay. Um, so what's a, what's a controller do? A controller is really a negotiator, okay? And, and here's why. A solar panel has its optimum voltage and amperage combination that it wants to produce, okay? Volts times amps equals watts. So a 100 watt solar panel has certain volts and certain amps. When multiplied together, it will give you 100 watts. So a solar panel has its optimum output called the maximum power point, which we'll talk about. Okay. However, the battery system has its voltage amperage combination that it will accept, that will keep it healthy, that it, it likes. So we need to go negotiate. We, we have, the panel wants to do one thing, the battery wants to accept another. The controller will work with the panel to get the maximum output at its voltage amperage, convert that voltage amperage, to what the battery is. Okay? So that's what a controller does. It also prevents the battery from overcharging. If the battery's full, it shuts down the solar system. Okay. So, uh, so it prevents overcharging, overheating of the battery. And uh, also, uh, question about diodes. What, what is a diode? A diode is like a, a one way valve, okay? only electric. So a diode will allow the power to come through this way. But what the solar panel does at night is it sucks up power. It, it actually draws power at night. So we have a two diode system where the controller prevents the panel from absorbing power, it prevents power from going this way. And we also put diodes in the panels themselves. So if we have multiple panels in parallel, they'll, they'll perform well. So the diodes prevent the panel from absorbing power. Now, for, for those going to a party tonight, I've got a couple of words for you to use to kind of impress people. Okay. Our first one is pulse width modulation. How's that? Pretty good? Or less, 
and it's a it's a 18 to 20 volt panel, then this is a fine, fine solution. If you've got a bigger rig with higher voltage, then we want to go up to the next buzzword for the party tonight, and that's maximum power point track, MPPT. And, and MPPT is a little more expensive. Uh, it will, I'll show you what it'll do in a minute, to optimize the power from your solar system to your battery. And uh, it, it's a limited value if, if we have a small panel, but in a uh, larger system, it's worth the extra money uh, for a MPPT, maximum power point tracking So here's, here's what it does. So remember, uh, volts times amps equals watts, which is our power. So if we have a 200 uh, watt system here, let's say that, that from these panels, I, I, I wired them so, and they're 860 to 22 volt panels, We've got 18 volts coming into the controller at 11.2 amps. I've got, I've got two panels wired together, so I've got 18 times 11 should equal 200 watts. Okay. Now, what the controller does is it converts, the battery wants 14 volts, so it reduces the voltage and increases the amperage. Okay, and what the battery really wants is is as much amperage as it'll take and 14 volts. So you see what it does. Now, if, if I have a panel that's a higher voltage, especially a commercial panel or a panel that's wired for higher voltage, say it's a 36 volt, well, it's only going to be producing 5.6 uh, amps at 36 volts. Again, this equals 200. But now it'll take it down to 36 volts down to 14 and give me 14.3. So you see what it does? It reduces the voltage, brings up the amperage, which is exactly what we want to do to charge our batteries. Now there's a little bit of inefficiency in doing that. Uh, the higher the voltage, you know, we can get up to a 3% loss of power. But if the voltage is down to 20 to 25 volts, it's less than 1% of a good control. A very cheap controller, maybe 5%, 7%. So, again, you get what you pay for. So that, that's why we want an MPPT, Maximum Power Point Tracking. Can the MPPT also take a voltage that is lower than 12 volts and boost it up? Okay, but if I'm lower than 12, will it boost it? Uh, no, to, to do that, you need a boost controller. And, and there are several companies that make a boost controller, and they actually go the opposite way to reduce the amperage of boost But by and large, most panels are above 18 volts, yeah. so it's not an issue.